Your call is being forwarded to a short tell voicemail system. Scott Rogers. Is not available. Please leave a message at the tone. When finished, you may hang up or press pound for additional options. Hello, uh, Scott Rogers. Uh, I don't think we've ever met. The name is William Montgomery. I can be reached here at 970-825-4421, or I have a voicemail line at 970-412-5463. So I was directed towards you from your secretary. Um, In these types of situations, sometimes I've been told uh, and directed towards the internal affairs. Um, But I had witnessed perjury the other day, and uh, in court, uh, it's a felony, and it was substantiated with evidence. And um, uh, I don't know what if you can do anything with your department, uh, but this is really serious, man. I'm not joking. Uh, you guys, by you guys, I, I, I'm very general, but I speak both about the police department and the DA's office, um, and even some judges. Uh, but basically, you guys have what we call an image problem, my brother and I. And where you don't want to take calls on yourselves, you know, you don't want to throw yourselves under the bus. You'd rather ratify that what your officers were doing was, you know, not against the law and so forth and so on. Uh, but, you know, you are a DA and I imagine that you would have the um, jurisdiction for crimes like perjury and false imprisonment um, committed by officers, officers of the law. Uh, that it's not just something that you kind know, of gets rolled into a 42 USC down the road. And so, you know, do I need to go to a 42 USC for an officer to get charged with false imprisonment? You know, say if he picks me up on a private drive using a public median statute. That, as an example, that actually happened in Boulder. Um, So I don't think I need to go to a 42 USC in general, but uh, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I just need to report this so that you guys can look into it. And I could also hold you guys to a fire now of either co-conspiring or racketeering if you side with them if you go ahead and throw yourself under that same bus so you know i'm giving you a little fair warning here i'm not trying to defame you uh you could theoretically be a good genuine non-crony um but so far your whole team is is definitely not not looking good these days so in a nutshell officer sean giddings at my attempting to influence trial i believe on the 21st or the 23rd i think it was the 23rd of august um in the morning there Hold on, stupid trains. In any event, uh, my uh, investigation prior to that moment had yielded several specific questions uh, that I like to ask people to fry them on the stand, so to speak. And so I got Giddings to say that he had filled out police reports in a certain order. Uh, I made sure I clarified. And uh, he said that he had filled out the Occupy Jefferson police report first before the attempting to influence police report. Now that is wrong. And that I'm counting as a charge of attempting to influence through deceit to influence that judge's decision, obviously, so that she would consider that what I was saying to Mike West was more of a threat versus not. Uh, so this is a, this is a um, pivotal lie that an entire courtroom is depending on. And so, if you guys want to do a little bit of an investigation on this, I'll give you a head start. Uh, He didn't fill out the police report for Occupy Jefferson until the 29th or the 30th. Um, I'll get my details out. But it was after the attempting to influence documentation was filled out. Uh, In fact, actually, if you look at the actual report times and so forth and so on, um, the other officers that night on the 14th, they filled out their police reports the next day. Giddings, at 2.30 in the morning that night, so 9.14, at 2.30 in the morning, he actually did start an attempting to influence charge. It was under menacing, or I think it was actually harassment at the time, but it showed it as 2.30. And so that's really scary. That was my whole point, was that they charged me, or they started an investigation or something, getting started something, at 2.30 in the morning after I said my digging himself a grave comment. Uh, At 2.30 in the morning, I didn't think he had, you know, contact um, wherewithal with Mike West just yet. And so, uh, ultimately, I don't want to say this, but so far, all of the evidence is yielding um, that Mike West and Giddings had spoken before this point in time of the 14th, 
and they had worked up some idea of what a charge might be. And then what do you know, whenever I say dig yourself a grave, I sealed my fate evidently. And so just in a nutshell, basically right after the protest at 2.30 in the morning is when he starts a harassment uh, police report that is the one that eventually is turned into the attempted influence police report. Um, but he doesn't save it. Uh, he just, um, or, you know, he prints a draft of it later, two weeks. And so, uh, but the timestamps are still there. Uh, but more importantly, the Occupy Jefferson paperwork, there were uh, original p paperworks filed by the other officers that night. And then there was him, Giddings. He actually put in his own supplement on the 24th for my Occupy Jefferson uh, ticket. And he didn't even fill out anything there either. And then eventually on the 29th or the 30th, like I said, I'll have to go look that up. Uh, but after the attempting to influence was fully, fully typed up and printed out, uh, he went ahead and submitted his report for Occupy Jefferson. Now, if you can only imagine why one person would do such a thing, they're cooking. He's cooking his case. He wanted to make sure that whatever he put down in his police reports was consistent with whatever Mike West was going to tell him. And that he didn't want to, you know, look bad or uh, say something that would possibly be used against him later but lo and behold like i said i asked him in court go over the transcripts yourself he very 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 clearly understood the question which police report did you fill out first and when and he gave his answers he said that it was the occupy jefferson paperwork first and then the attempted influence uh paperwork and that is not correct that is literally not correct again let me repeat he took two weeks to submit a meaningful report with words of my attempting to influence case. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm all wordy. I'll miss them. He took two weeks before he touched my Occupy Jefferson paperwork and he submitted it after he filled out and submitted my attempting to influence paperwork. Now, of course, you know, who knows what we can read into that. Like I said, I think it's something along the lines of conspiring, cooking, uh, so forth and so on, making uh, charges fit. Uh, personally, I spoke to Mike Calhoun, um, and no one ever talked to, at least him, uh, prior to the 8th or the 14th. And so ultimately, you know, I'm going to have to explain all this in, in general in my uh, own case with you guys. But uh, I think they actually trumped up that they had some sort of reaction on the 8th to my comments, um, which I said, you know, quit your jobs to everybody. And they basically fished something out on the 14th that they thought they could relate to the 8th. Um, but there's very little paperwork on that. There's no records of um, anything um, with regards to Mike West uh, saying things to certain people. Um, but ultimately, I think it's pretty darn concerning that a police officer on the stand under oath just told a judge that he filled out two very very important police reports the two that refer to the two threats or alleged threats that i made filled them out out of order now is that something that a judge should know yes absolutely i think i'm gonna write the judge myself that do a little motion to let you know stuff but you're a da and um personally speaking i think you have a crony that works underneath you. I don't know his name, the one that had prosecuted me that day. Um, but he also did a lot of things that were not okay. He used my words out of order. He cherry-picked and so forth. Uh, I tried to explain to him that the officers themselves there were also um, doing these things. And, you know, he didn't get that. And uh, let me just uh, top it all off with this one last thing. Uh, that DA also told me that officers can fill out warrantless arrest affidavits for misdemeanors not committed in their presence that's like super duper totally illegal man and like i gotta report this too uh, but officer v hill in that case that had originally uh, arrested me on a um, harassment and obstruction warrantless arrest affidavit that got dropped uh he did that with a misdemeanor though if you notice that, it was a warrantless arrest affidavit for harassment and obstruction. Now, just tell me real quick, if an officer doesn't have to fill out any warrantless arrest affidavits or warrants for anything not committed in his presence, then what the hell is a judge for?
Seriously, why would you need to ever have a judge fill out a warrant then if you could just go fill out your own warrantless arrest affidavits for both felonies and misdemeanors, both committed not and in your presence? And so I, I, I asked this to you know the DA point blank, and he's like, that's not true. They can fill those out. And so, you know, that's another charge. That's a that's a 42 USC. That's a false imprisonment. Technically, you should be able to pick that up yourself. Um, but nevertheless, uh, these are two very large things I just needed to report to you. I got lots of other stuff too. I got Giddings, in, you know, in an unlawful conduct trial of mine where DeShane's had um, uh, argued that he went ahead and uh, lied that um, he never spoke to any city attorney, even though his body cam footage uh, says that he did. And so that was another attempted influence charge there to convince the jury that I was in a park, which I was not after the fact. Um, and so, by the way, the elements of being in a park is that you're, you know, a designated park, uh, posted and designated. And so you can't use some pr trash pickup map. And so at that point, that the, all those officers falsely imprisoned us off of that sidewalk that night and the next night. And, um, you know, it's pretty concerning that my brother, who gets picked up on the exact same sidewalk, goes to his municipal court trial has it dropped by the judge because there's no evidence because there's no designated or postedness uh getting tried to pr provide that map to him and then i get, i lose my unlawful conduct trial over the exact same things but you know i can't insert or um get my you know uh elements of uh a park in there somehow they didn't let me because uh, all i was trying to do was explain designated and posted and that you know he already failed once and so um uh, but yeah, lots of crap here going on. I'm sorry, uh, you know, that you're hearing it all out of order. Um, I've been trying to put it together with my brother. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on YouTube now. Uh, very, very, very educational, very juicy. Uh, you see, we play um, uh, anti-abortionists. We'll call in all the time, see if we'll get picked up in that same spot. For, you know, and they'll be like, no, you're fine, totally. Um, I'll have, uh, by the way, I have all the audio of internal affairs uh, compl buzz complaining me. Uh, for the last couple of years, um, uh, but yeah, we 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 knew that this sort of thing uh, was going to happen once we started seeing it, and so we thought we had enough protections, and I think we still do. There's a ton of evidence that you know is all your guys' stuff that you can go through now, uh, but just for now, Scott Rogers, please, if you can, at least give me a call back to confirm that you received word about Officer Giddings testifying under oath in my attempted influence trial and lying about the order in which he filled out his police reports. Now again, I don't think that's a technicality. I asked him multiple ways, multiple times, if you go through the actual transcripts. Uh, I was very clear because I knew what I was after because I saw it in my discovery. You know, so pull up my discovery. You'll see that everything is all out of order. Why is there a, a draft? Why is there a printed draft, for instance? Uh, but, but ultimately, if you look at that printed draft, and then you actually look at the actual submitted report, they both have different submittal times. So the draft says that it was started at 2.30 in the morning on 9.14. Uh, what was actually saved says something like 9.29 and so forth. But yada, yada, yada. See, this is why I have to put it all on paper and uh, or you know put it in a YouTube uh, channel is because you know things will just get... Uh, wordy when I have to explain it these ways because well I don't have enough time right now still still putting together stuff on the streets you know in general I don't know if you guys know much about my brother and I but we have about 30 of these cases uh, we've counted over 50 cops and over I think about 16 or 17 of these 30 incidences that we've experienced across 10 jurisdictions now are all but instant open and shut 42 USC's meaning like we had a security guard detain us one time uh we i got false arrested at a walmart for not showing my receipt uh my brother and i've been picked up numerous times on private drives using what the officers claimed were public statutes um of course you know they didn't know the definition of a street or at least they thought it could apply but if it doesn't you know and uh, ultimately we're getting picked up because we're the innocent of the you know 10 that you throw away uh, to get the guilty you know so it's a guilty until proven innocent system that we're in and so my brother and I get picked up in all the same places that you guys have been sweeping homeless people forever and so you're so used to it 
that you don't even need to use maps anymore. You don't even need to read your statutes. And so real quick, then, uh, 1103 of 2015, more false imprisonment. Uh, I was picked up by Fort Collins police right outside of a park. I offered a map. They said save that for court. They lied in their municipal court of where we actually were. They lied against their own body cam footage. And, you know, fortunately we had a smart jury then. Uh, they, they went ahead and exonerated me. But that's not really kind of an exoneration now, is it? Because all we're doing is discovering that the cop didn't actually bring me in off of any real evidence. At least evidence that substantiates each element. And so, no probable cause, no arguable probable cause. This crap is getting old. Um, I've tried uh, to speak with Internal Affairs on this multiple, multiple times. They don't give me calls back anymore. And so, I've been trying to set up a meeting with their chief of police. Um, I had like an hour and a half meeting once um, with their city attorney. We never really got anywhere. Um, so I haven't actually talked to any real attorneys about our issues for since they began. And so, you know, I'm fighting a wrongful conviction of 12 years anyway from Judge Blair. Um, we got uh, illegally ticketed, two of us, just my brother and I, in a five unrelated house two years ago by the city's uh, three unrelated rule, Dale Wood there. Um, so, you know, I'm only rambling because you're probably the closest thing I've ever gotten to, to an attorney that might actually know a couple of things. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So far, um, we've had not so much good luck, you know, in other jurisdictions. In uh, Denver, we had a city attorney or a, a, dep a deputy district attorney literally tell me that it was okay that that security guard went ahead and detained me because it was only for a couple of minutes. And I was, you know, I wasn't put in cuffs, right? Except that, you know, if you consent to their authority, um, by the way, that, co that security guard said he was a cop. So I'm going to consent to their authority when they say they are, because I thought he was like a Fort Collins, uh, you know, CSU PD. Uh, we found out after the fact that he wasn't a cop and that he totally thought he was, like an actual unsworn officer. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the whole point is, is that when we talked to Internal Affairs with that situation and other situations, we get the runaround. We get officers telling us that to ratify, otherwise tell us that that's not a private drive, that's a public street for the purposes of this statute, blah, blah, blah. And so we end up going bowling and just taking out more cronies. And so I'm just letting you know ahead of time, I have absolutely zero faith in you so far uh, because of where you work and the constituencies that you have uh, with other people. Uh, so far, 100% of 100% officers I have met in the law are cronies. So, um, to send this message, press pound or hang up. To review, press one. To re record, press two. To mark this message urgent, press three. To mark this me message urgent. To send this message, press pound or hang up.